Our scripture reading today from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 17. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do the people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. This is an open letter to our confirmands and perhaps a reminder for us all. Dear Maddie and Ellie and William and Libby, Amara Z, family, family. You might remember from our early days that confirmation literally means with firmness. Today you choose for yourselves to say yes to what has gone before, what your parents and families, church and God have done in your lives. This before refers to baptism and to our faith journey up to this point. Our baptism is a reminder that God accepts us and loves us even before we are aware of it or can even accept that love. This is the grace that goes before, prevenient grace. And we owe our gratitude to our loving God and thanks to our parents and families and to our church family. You are now part of a long-standing tradition, confirmation, and you sit here in the glow of your family's pride. Not only your biological or adoptive family, but also your church family. You are surrounded, you are surrounded by people who love you. What a day. Even the angels are cheering, along with the saints that have gone before, who have set through the tradition for us all. And we rejoice with you this day. It is in that joy your parents remember your baptism and the promises made for you we rejoice that you have chosen to make these promises, make this covenant in confirmation your faith for yourself. You're, you are old enough to profess your faith, to say what you believe. It doesn't mean that you'll have all the answers, but who does? But you have learned enough to begin your journey for yourself. Confirmation is the rite of passage where you choose for yourselves to claim the name Christian and where you choose to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. By your coming before your family and your church family, you are a witness a witness to your family's love and faith 
as well as the faithfulness of generations that have gone before you. You are a witness to Christ's call on your life as Christ beckons, follow me. And you are responding to that call. You have chosen to say yes. Like Peter in our scripture today, you are saying, I know that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of the living God. Now we remember the words spoken by your parents and sponsors at your baptism. That day, adults spoke for you, making promises to bring you to this day where you can speak the words of commitment for yourself, words that will help you live as God's people into the future. To live among God's faithful people, to hear God's word and to share in Christ's communion table, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and action, to serve all people following the example of our Lord Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Yes, your faith does and will ask a lot of you. These are promises which are beyond the ability of any one of us to fill on our own. These are proud promises today, yet promises which we as adults know, looking back on our own confirmation, are easy to forget and challenging to live up to. And like Peter, we will make mistakes. But know and trust that Christ will call you back to himself, ever ready to forgive and call you forward into new life as Jesus Christ is ever faithful. Also, no, you do not do this alone. You do not live out your faith on your own. Just as Christ calls you forward in your faith, so does your church family. Look around this sanctuary. You can see the love and support, not only your families, but also your faith community, your church family. This is the body of Christ. You are surrounded by people who are committed to you and to all who are baptized in the faith that they will, with God's help, proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. The promise of your church family continues. We will surround you with a community of love and forgiveness that you may grow in your trust of God and be found faithful in your service to others. And we will pray for you that you may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. We work together to live out our faith. We are accountable to one another in setting the example of Christ's love, living out our faith in the confidence of that same life, love that brings us to put our faith into action. We adults, we are mindful of how our children and youth watch us and listen and question. And it is you, you, our children, who <laughs> propel us forward so often with insights and open our eyes to new possibilities and new realizations in God's great love. 
but I also want to speak to you about your faith. Some of you may have already started thinking about what your faith in Christ Jesus means to you. Some of you may not be confronted with questions of faith or those questions that cause you to question your faith or God, but know that those questions will come. This is only human. We are assured so often through scripture where in Hebrews we are brought to this insight. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Will your life be easier now? Hmm, sorry. Probably not in the way that you think. This is not a magical step in your life where suddenly all will be perfect. But to have faith in God, to know that you are not alone, to know that nothing can separate you from God's great love, this can change your life. Does God love you more today than yesterday? No. God's love for you has always been and will always be total, infinite, and beyond your imagining. As you live into the realization of God's great love for you, be mindful of the promise Jesus gave you. I will never leave you or forsake you. No. Know in your heart of hearts that you are God's beloved. Rely on God more in your life and pray. Open your life to the power of prayer. Pray, pray for those that you love, your family and friends. Pray especially for those that you don't love quite so much. Know that prayer can change your life. Prayer can change your heart. Get to know God better. Read your Bible. Even if it's just for a few minutes each day, you will learn so much about who God is. You will learn so much about who you are in Christ Jesus. You will even learn about human nature. But especially you will learn how even when we don't get it right, God can and will still use you. God truly loves you and will move you. Depend on God, for God is faithful. God is always working for your good. If God can use a man like David with all his faults, if God can use a man like Peter who denies Jesus, but he is the rock on whom the church is built, if God can use a woman like me, a sinner, but one who truly loves God, then God can and will surely use you. As we pray over you and for you today, know, anticipate and expect God to do a wonderful work in you and through you. God has a plan for your life. Look to God to show you the way to be a true disciple. And when God places that call on your life, all you need to say is, yes, Lord, here I am. Send me. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. 
Amen.